What's up, Wolfpack fam? It's your boy, Kid, back at it again. Hope you're doing well today. Suggestion comes from Cheryl. Shout out to you. Appreciate you. Uh, I don't know if we're going to be getting all sad or anything like that. So uh, I don't have any napkins near me or tissue. Uh, so go get your own. Go bring your snacks or whatever you need. Uh, and let's kick back and let's go check out this uh, viewer suggested uh, video. Let's get it. Snacks not included. Let's go. Great Christmas television this year. Dawn French has got something extra special for us to enjoy. Uh, before we uh, talk to her, here's a look at Roll and Beatrix, the tale of a curious mouse. Just looked like the perfect Christmas viewing, and we're talking about Sky One, Christmas Eve, 8.15, Roald and Beatrix, the tale of the curious mouse. Hello, Dawn French. Hello, Dawn. Compliments of the season to you. Good morning, festive, lovely, happy uh, morning. I put a couple of snowballs on my head for you. Well, you would never have noticed. We like those, we like those very much, very strong. Uh, uh, this looks absolutely delightful, Dawn. I mean, I'm a Beatrix Potter fan. My, my, we inherited the books from my grandma and they were kind of passed through the family, very dog-eared. Um, were you a Beatrix Potter fan when you were a child? Absolutely, yes. Uh, and I think the thing I liked about Beatrix Potter is although it looks cosy and cute, it's not at all. There are elements of Beatrix Potter that are quite alarming. And I think that's what Roald Dahl really reacted to. And in this film, it's remarkable, really. It's about the very real day, the true happening, when um, Roald Dahl, age six, met the 60-year-old Beatrix Potter. And that actually did happen. Isn't that yeah, amazing? Yeah, and I, I didn't know that oh, story well, until I was reading about this today. Didn't know that story. I love that this true story. So w tell us about Roald Dahl as a boy and, and his obsession almost with Beatrix Potter. Well, as far as I know, he just loved her writing. And he had a tough old time role when he was very young. His father died, his sister died. And he asked his mother if he could go and visit uh, Peter Rabbit. So she took him to Beatrix Potter's garden. I mean, I'm sure Beatrix was a grumpy old thing <laughs> who had many children running into her garden and I'm sure she was fed up with it and, and of course she wouldn't have known she was meeting the future Roald Dahl um, but he adored her writing I think if you look at his writing you can see the influence the darkness in a funny way well could I ask you uh, as an actress the responsibility <laughs> of the young lad who I think is called Harry Taylor to play yes. Roald Dahl uh, and you, yes. as a pretend 60-year-old woman, because you're obviously nowhere near that age at all, but, um, but what's, it like, what's it like interrelating with a young lad? Big responsibility for him. Well, listen, uh, you know, when you know you're going to be working with... I think he's nine, Harry Taylor, who plays this part. Uh, when I knew I was working with this kid, I thought, well, it could go either way. This could be tricky or it could be a delight. And Harry Taylor was, without a doubt, the best actor on the set. Wow. No doubt about it. Listened hard, took direction, was sweet and kind and funny and cheeky under very curious conditions. Obviously, we're filming with the whole crew in PPI. It was the first thing that we filmed back in the summer after the lockdown. And he was amazing. And I cannot say the same for some of the other actors on the set, like, for instance... <laughs> Sally the pig. Oh, oh well, they tell say, us. They say never work with children or animals. Uh, you've, you've done, done both. both. So what, what was Sally oh, the pig up to? Sally the pig was just a pig, if we're <laughs> honest. <laughs> I mean, I've worked with other actors that are poor son <laughs> in this way. Uh, but that pig wouldn't do anything unless you dangled a croissant in front of it. Mind you, <laughs> I'm pretty much the same. Kind of get that. <laughs> Oh dear. And where did you film it, Dawn? And you said you mentioned their COVID. I mean, I, I presume at one point you were concerned whether it would ever get filmed. Yeah, I, I didn't believe it would happen at all. But um, all, all credit to Sky, actually, and Elaine Cameron, who's the producer, and Abby Wilson, the writer. Uh, they just did not give up. And they, um, yeah, we, we managed to go down to Cardiff and we recreated uh, the Lake District in Cardiff. Yeah. And it, it's a beautiful film. It's got animation in it. It's very touching. It's very Christmassy. It's a proper all the family kind of film. And I had such a treat Pardon making me? it, you know, with Bill Bailey and Alison Stebbin yeah. and Jessica Hyde, Rob Brydon. It was a complete treat. Uh, looks, well, looks, looks really good, man. From what I'm seeing here, I definitely got to check out the film. I haven't seen it. 
But yeah, you know, I feel like I'm, it's John Cena. You can't see me. Probably don't want to reveal too much on it, but damn, I want to see it now. You know what? You are a woman in demand at the moment as well, because we also see you on BBC One, where you've reprised your, yeah. your role, these monologues with the Vicar of Dibley. And, um, yeah. and also the rerunning the series, just to say to people if you haven't tuned into that. But I just want to say, Don, and tribute to you, you had me really choked up uh, this week with, with your monologue. Um, and it was all about Alice Tinker. It was about Geraldine Payne, tribute to Alice Tinker in, in real life, the actress Emma Chambers, and uh, who, yes. died, who died, who passed away two years ago. How hard was that for you to do? Well, you know, we hadn't had an opportunity really to say goodbye to her properly. And this was our chance. And of course, the character, we made sure that the character had also died. But everyone knows that Emma has died. And so I suppose in my tribute to her, it was Geraldine talking about Alice, but it was also Dawn talking about Emma, which is why it took seven takes to do. And the one that eventually made it to screen was the one with the least crying. I was just a blubbering mess because we miss her so much. I mean, it was such a, a special relationship, as you say, the two characters, but but the two of you were, were good friends and you want, we to, were. Pay we you want to pay tribute, don't you? But it brings back so many memories. It must be very tough. Well, the series... It does, but that is, that is the great thing about Vicar of Dibley. It's very inclusive in that way. It can be silly and funny and light, and it can also address issues of the day, it can be very current, and it can be warm and understanding about something like that, about our grief. Right, so that brings me to the question, would Geraldine still be in 2020, 2021, uh, in Dibley, and would there be a possibility of a scene a 2021 version or so of Geraldine? Well, she's definitely in Dibley at the moment. She's married and she's in Dibley. But, you know, I've always said to Richard Curtis, she make a great bishop. Come <laughs> on. <laughs> yeah, I can see Very you in good. the frock. Definitely Very see you good. in the frock. Well, um, what about you for, for, do for Christmas dawn? Uh, well, I'm with my family he um, here in Cornwall, where I am right now, in the middle of a huge storm. Um, yeah, yeah, we're just do we're trying to keep the rules. We're trying to understand them. You know, yeah. we're, we're just being doing a small Christmas, simple as that. Yeah. Well, well just Christmas have a safe one as well. Lovely Can seeing I'll you. I'll tell you one more little thing, one more. guys. Go yeah. ahead. Tell us. Something very easy to wrap this Christmas is this. <laughs> got it. I've got it. <laughs> I'm just telling that. you that my heart and soul is in this book, which because I've really tried to write a love letter to mothers yeah. and daughters. And it's easy to wrap, easy to get under the tree. Very good, very good. And a lovely read. Thank you very much. Thank you, indeed. Dawn. Merry Dawn Christmas Dawn French, to you. National Treasure. <laughs> Vicar, could happy I just Christmas. wish you a happy and holy Christmas as well. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you all. <laughs> go, on, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. <laughs> Thank Dawn you. French. Thanks, Dawn. There you are. Miss her already. Oh, she's lovely, isn't she? Uh, lovely, yeah. lovely. In so the last many... time we were, she was, we, were, we were talking to us about her book, isn't it? Yeah, her book and then her BBC yeah. series and her Sky One. Roald Dahl and very Beatrix, busy, The Tale lady. of the Curious Mouse. Sky One Christmas Eve at 8.15 with Dawn French amongst a host of other stars. I haven't seen it, boys and girls. Uh, they're probably... They probably, uh, I don't know, they blurred it for, I don't know, copyright or some shit like that uh, with the pictures. Uh, I know if I would have probably saw Emma Chambers then, uh, uh, Alex Tinker, I probably would have got a lot more emotional. But you have to think about, you know, having your, your co-worker, your colleague uh, working, you know, you're working on set. You, you 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 become a family. So she did get very choked up when we watched the the video. I'll relink the uh, video that we did. Um, it was that that was hard to see. Those that watched it alongside me, that was extremely hard to see. Um, there's not enough great words that we can say to express how awesome you know Miss Emma Chambers is because she she just lit up any room. She lit up the scene. She always made you laugh. Uh, you know, her interacting with Hugo was always hilarious. Her interacting with her, you know, best friend forever, uh, Geraldine. You know, you see those sofa scenes. So if you haven't watched Vicar Dibley, what are you doing with your life, man? Watch that damn show. That is a great freaking show. Fun-filled, you know, uh, good atmosphere, a lot of crazy scenes, a lot of WTF moments, uh, you know, but just overall good 
fun. And um, th to hear her say that it took her about seven takes or something like that, that's, you know, very understandable. You know, you, you've lost someone who you, you, you most likely thought of family, you know, like a sister and, and just, you know, a great worker. But, um, you know, you, you could just think about it like, uh, you know, when you work in your job and you lost some colleagues and stuff like that. We've had that a couple uh, incidents, you know, where, you know, those are their time has come and, uh, you know, it's hard to be there. It feels a little bit quieter. It feels a little bit dark. Uh, it feels sad. And, you know, even in, like visitors, I've lost visitors that you see. Uh, you know, show up, like, let's say they show up to your shop or your place and, you know, you become friends and you see people, you know, like deteriorate. It, it really, not to, I don't want to be too grim, but it breaks my heart, Uh, you know, to see that stuff. You know, we all have our own time, you know, when it's time to, you know, uh, we, the one thing I would never want to know is when my time is coming. Like, I don't want to know like, oh, you're going to, it's 10 years, 55 seconds. You know, I would never want to know anything like that, but it's very important to live your life. Um, So I definitely might look into the movie for free time, just for my own purpose. Um, You know, have you guys seen it? I, I know I grew up uh, reading a lot of Roald Dahl books. Um, I don't remember as much, but the one that I really did like was James and the Giant Peach. That was one book that we, we read in school. Uh, great book. I remember enjoying the books. Um, you know, brilliant writer. So it seemed like she was saying that Beatrice, I guess, inspired roles. So we have to look. We don't know much about her. I'm not going to lie to you guys. But I will say that Geraldine is one of the most awesome characters. Dawn French is one of the best actresses that we've seen. We've seen some top-notch uh, actresses, and she's she's up there for me, um, always bringing a smile to my face, and uh, yeah, it, it's definitely a show, Vicar Dibley, uh, that we've really enjoyed it. It it, it made you feel good, and um, not too many shows can do that. There are shows that have done that, you know, that you feel good, you're going on a roller coaster ride, uh, you know, Only Fools and Horses, Still Game, Fanny Dorm, you feel like you're on some sort of a great adventure. Uh, and, you know, all the shows that we're watching now, like Absolute Fabulous, we've seen Dawn French in small capacities there, which is great. But what I'd like to see, and I know obviously this is much later because they're talking with COVID, um, that she was still doing things and still being active, you know, writing books. I didn't know she wrote books. Uh, so you, you learn something new, and this is kind of why we do these things. Uh, I will never know everything, and it's exciting for me to just experience as much things as is humanly possible. So, uh, Cheryl, thank you for your suggestion. I know this is a long one. Um, I know that if they if they didn't unblur, if they unblurred those pictures, I probably would have been a little bit more uh, uh, s you know sadder. But just thinking about her uh, is is getting there. So I don't I'm not gonna talk anymore because then I'll start getting mad emotional and stuff, and I don't want you guys crying and stuff like that. <laughs> uh, so you can't make me cry watching this video. But hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Um, a lot of stars, a lot of people that we come in in, in uh, experience in life and 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 meet are gone, you know, that's the, that's the sad part, but, you know, keep, keep them here, keep them in your thoughts, uh, you know, those who have made an impact in your life, and, and just keep them in your memories, they're, I, I like to say gone, but not forgotten, um, you know, and especially if you're in, uh, you know, like the music industry, if you're in movie industry or TV shows, uh, you know, any sort of celebrity, it, you know, your work, a lot of times it lives on. So, uh, and like art as well. So I think her work uh, will speak volumes. I'm, I've just finished pretty much watching Vicar Dibley. I think we, we started it in 2022 going into 2023 finished it and um you know newer people are going to be watching these shows if they're good shows people are going to be watching it you you know you have your kids and you expose them to to watch some of these shows so i don't ever think we'll forget her and uh yeah we we love vicar dibley that is one special show so enough of my yapping thank you thank you for spending part of your day here hanging out i really do appreciate it we'll see you soon peace and love keep those suggestions rolling guys see ya Thank you.